what's going on guys? Thought I'd do a short video this morning. Hopefully you can see me. It's still kind of dark. I'm on my way to work and it doesn't really lighten up for another 20 minutes or so. Uh, a couple things I wanted to talk to you guys about and uh, plus I haven't done a car vlog in a long time. Uh, number one, I was uh, reading through the book of John this morning and something jumped out at me. There's this man who's blind that Jesus comes across. And of course, the disciples asked him, you know, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he be born blind? And Jesus said, neither. You know, this happened that Elohim might be glorified. And he's talking about because he's going to heal this guy. Uh, but then he says something else that I, that I just thought was really interesting. He said, you know, we what? I'm, we must do the work of Elohim while while it is daylight because night is coming when no one can work and you know he's not talking about you know like the, it's sunny out and the sun's gonna set and we all have to like go home and rest I think this is applicable if I said that word right to us right now in these last days right now there's still daylight and we need to be doing the work of Elohim now while we can because night is coming. You know, we are at the end of these birth pains and it's about to give birth to the real thing, to the beast, to the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. We need to work now while we can because night is coming when no one can work. And if you're one of those people and you're thinking, ah, you know, when things really blow up in my area, I'll then I'll get on my knees and repent and try to start doing the work for God. At that point, it's going to be too late because it's going to be night. And you won't be able to work. Right now, you can still freely speak. You can create a video. You can go to church. You can talk to somebody on the street, in your office, in your family and not suffer great persecution at this moment as of today. But those days are short. So I just thought I would bring that up. Do the work of Elohim while it's daylight, because night is coming when no one can work. Lastly, I wanted to just remind everyone to not hang on to your favorite pet doctrines, to be open to what God might want to teach you, and to not take offense. Love does not take offense. Those who are easily offended are without love. And if you're without love, then I would suggest that your relationship with the Lord is in danger. Because God is love and the Holy Spirit living in you should resemble that. You should not be so easily offended. And I, I get it. We all get upset. Hopefully you guys understand what I mean. What I've noticed after doing these videos and recording podcasts and doing things like this for, I think, two years now, somewhere in that range, is that there's, there's two things that people get really, really offended by, easily upset by. Number one is when you challenge their favorite pet doctrine or pet theory or whatever it is. As an example, I spend a lot of time talking about Mystery Babylon, Revelation 18, and where the United States fits into that, and the great scarlet whore who rides the beast, and how America fits that image. And sometimes people will get so upset because they're convinced, they've seen enough documentaries on the Vatican and the Jesuits and all that, that they're convinced that it's talking about the Vatican, and, and literally someone commented recently about, you know, it's the Vatican and I'm unsubscribing. And I just thought, wow, you're really committed to your, to your favorite doctrine, your favorite pet theory. And the truth is, is we're all looking through a glass dimly. I'm not saying that I have it right. I'm saying this is my opinion. This is what I believe God's revealing to me. Please consider it, look at it, study it, and pray about it and see what God reveals to you. You know, but people are easily offended. 
Don't be that way. Be open to receive whatever God might want to teach you. There's been a lot of opinions and a lot of thoughts that I've had to just completely change because the Lord has shown me something new, and it's usually through someone else who's teaching something contrary to what I believe, what I've believed to be true in the in the past. Don't hang on to things just because you th- you think you're an expert because you watch some sales pitch known as a documentary on it. Not everything on YouTube is true. Study the facts before you come to any conclusion about anything. Especially if it's challenging your current worldview because, let's face it, there's been a great deception and many are deceived about many things. Secondly, I find people getting upset and offended when you preach against sin. Boy, people get upset about that. Somebody commented today about uh, my interview with Benjamin Baruch. And I'm not saying I agree with everything he has to say. When I bring a guest on, I let them talk because I want them to give their thoughts and you, through the Holy Spirit and through prayer, discern those things. I don't want to just add in all of my thoughts and opinions. But when somebody comes on and they preach hard against sin or if I preach hard against sin, people get upset. You know, where's the grace? What about the pre-tribulation rapture? I'm not saying there is, you know, obviously God, there's grace and there's mercy and, and that's found in Jesus Christ. Yes, I believe there's a rapture and that Jesus is coming back for his church. But we're not off the hook to be free to sin all you want. Jesus came to set you free from sin, not set you free to sin. And people get upset if, if you dare to preach against sin. They immediately call it works religion. I never push works but I do believe in being accountable and that there's something wrong in your heart and in your relationship with Jesus if you're comfortable in your sin. And that's just the way it is, folks. So please, be mindful of these things. Do not be someone who takes offense easily. Be in prayer. Be on your knees before the Lord. Take your sin serious. Get that out of your life. I'm not preaching a works religion, but I'm saying that Jesus says, those who love me, obey me. And we need to come to him to even have the ability and the strength to do it. Because without that, we can't. And I'm the worst of us all. Trust me, I am. Just like uh, you know, Benjamin said on the podcast the other night, we're the least of the saints. Absolutely. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just trying to do the best I can, and I'm leaning on Jesus Christ for everything. And I just ask that you do the same and discern these things, you know, and if you don't think that America's, you think America's just going to be restored and everything's going to be happy, go lucky, you know, you're, you're free to believe that. But I think if you take it into prayer, you're, you're not going to come to that conclusion. At least that's not uh, what I've come up with. Don't be so addicted to your pet doctrines and your pet theories and don't see everything in the Bible through your favorite pet doctrine. I know people who uh, look through the lens of, let's say, uh, we'll say, Cal- like Calvinism, like election. And if it doesn't match up with their ideas of what election looks like, then it must not be true. You can't look through a lens of your favorite pet doctrine. Try to read the Bible with an open mind. Try to, try. Unfortunately, we've been brainwashed through false teachings and and media and all of these things and we really have to come to the Bible with a whole fresh new mind if we're really going to understand it. We have to be open to some of these ideas that may seem crazy on the surface but sometimes when you take them to prayer and you study the Word of God you find out that some of these things that seemed crazy aren't really crazy. The ideas we had beforehand were Oh. Mm-hmm.